Hello, thanks for joining today's vlog where we will be sharing what we know about black history in the UK. Now, in the wake of the murder of George Floyd, the world surged once again into recognising the lack of equality for black lives. From Ben and Jerry's ice cream to Lego. Brands are making bold statements for Black History Month and there's been a lot of learning. I'm Emil and I've been researching just exactly what young people have been picking up. So we want to hear your thoughts, your opinions, your stories. Now, today I was supposed to be joined by my special guest, Chris. Uh, he says he's very famous, I'm sure you know him from your favourite programmes, but, well, he's been having some technical difficulties, as you can see. So we might just have to power on through, if that's okay. Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry, I'm late. Uh, listen, um, the, oh, sorry, I, um, I'm in, like, five minutes. Listen, I'll just get ready, um, find my keys, set up, and then I'll be with you, all right? So I won't be long, okay? Um... Yes, yeah. That's all for them. We should be ready for us to start. Okay, it's been one of them mornings this morning. Anyway, listen, can't talk, but um, I'll be with you in a bit, alright? See you in a bit. Bye. Oh, okay. Um, where was I? Uh, bl black history. When we hear black history, um, who. who oh, oh, the... oh, sorry, sorry, I'm late. Sorry, I'm late. <laughs> I, I told them you were having technical difficulties, so. Oh, well, I, I have been, uh, but also I forgot that it was bin day. Um, I had to put out the bins. Well, first my alarm didn't go off, uh, and then there was this old lady that I had to help because she, well, she dropped the oh, shopping bag. Oh, you're here now! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Chris, um, why yeah, don't you tell yeah, the... Sorry, 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 because I was just setting up the... Uh, Wait, where's your green screen? Uh, I, 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 I don't have one. Uh, so, apologies. Um, uh, did, did you get the messages that I've been sending you? Sort of. About what we're doing today? Yeah, definitely, yeah, sort of. So, so, so why, um... Well, for the film. Oh, cool, 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 cool. It's it's just it's 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 a it's a vlog. Uh, we're doing a vlog. Oh right! <sighs> I thought we were doing a film. Uh, can we still have CGI? No. Oh, but I can still class myself as an actor. You know, just to add stuff to the CV. Uh, maybe. Really? Thank you. Can I? <laughs> Can I do an accent? Black history. When we hear black history, who are the first people that spring to mind? Oh, we started. Yeah, yeah, we started a little while ago, actually. Oh, uh, wowza. Am I embarrassed? <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> Sorry, um, can I answer that? Sure. Um... Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks. Go on. Well, Martin Luther King um, Jr., the youngest man to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. He was a spokesman and leader in the civil rights movement. Rosa Parks was born on my birthday and she stood her ground when a bus driver instructed her to give up her seat for a white passenger. Uh, she was known as the mother of the freedom movement. Great. And do you know where they come from? Yeah, of course. America. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are some incredible people and stories from across the pond. What pond? Black history in the United States was recognised in February 1976 to highlight key figures in the civil rights movement. Oh, yeah. No, I remember learning about that in school, actually. <laughs> Uh, but Black History Month wasn't really recognised in the UK until 1987, and many events close to home, like the Bristol bus boycott, they've been well, yet to be taught about in schools. Oh, uh, what do you mean by that? Well, uh, when I say Black History, what events do you think of? Who springs to mind? <laughs> well, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks. Now, specifically here in the in the UK. Um, okay. 
Well, that's a toughie. Uh, give me a second. Oh, uh, what about... Oh, no, 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 no. She's American. Um, uh, um, oh, yeah, oh, no, that's... Uh, okay, well, w- w- while we have a think, uh, followers, mm. hit that pause button and in groups, why don't you share what events and notable people you know of that are connected to Black British history? It just feels a tinsy unprofessional when you're on your... Yeah, sorry, sorry again. Uh, all right. Oh, uh, so the t- the two of us had a bit of a discussion in the break, and um, and 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 we, Chris. Yeah, sorry. Yes, um, we had a discussion about the British people who spring to mind when we say Black History, and I have to admit, I couldn't really think of that many, but I managed to come up with. Uh, Diane Abbott, first black woman to be elected to Parliament, and Sir Trevor MacDonald, the first sole presenter of News at 10, who received more awards than any other news broadcaster in Britain. But to be honest, I struggled to think of as many British figures compared to American ones. And, and yet there are so many important people from our own history that we don't even talk about. That I didn't even know existed. Yeah, right. <laughs> well... Let's find out a bit more about some of those characters, yeah? Um, but maybe let's do it with a bit more style. Ooh, do I get to use my green screen? Uh, well, not quite. Uh, oh. But we've got these slick slides I sent you in the messages you missed, and you can do a voiceover. <laughs> well, it's not quite a 20-foot dinosaur or transformer, but um, yeah, I suppose it'll do. Great, well, let's jump in and see what we know. Okay. We would like you to match these key words and tones, do it in pairs if you like, and share your thoughts with the rest of the class. Ready to do the voiceover, Chris? Hi, I'm Chris. In pairs, we would like you to complete the match them up worksheet and we'll give you five minutes for that. You have five minutes starting. Teachers press pause now. And time is up. After watching the slideshow, how many of the matchups did you get right? Here is a reminder. I wish I had known about these words and these characters when I was younger. And today, we would actually like to know what you know. What characters have been uncovered in history for you? Actually, I'm going to do a check. A check? Yeah. You can join in as well, actually, Chris. If you've heard of these historical characters, shout, yup. If not, shout, nope. Got it? Yeah, got it. Now, I do like the spotlight, uh, but on this occasion, you will have to uh, to join in as well. All right, or else I'll just look silly, okay? So, yup or nope. Oakley doakley, who here knows about Caesar? Yup. Nice. Give me a yup or a nope if you know about Septimus Severus. Nope. Okay. What about Charles Dickens? Yup. Hmm. Alexander Dumas? Nope. (laughs) Okay, what about Christopher Columbus? Yup. And Matthew Henson? Anyone heard of him? Nope. Okay. What about Florence Nightingale? Yup. Give me a yup or nope for Mary Seacole. Yup. Marilyn Monroe? Yup. <laughs> what about Josephine Baker? Nope. Interesting. So, from football to Arctic explorers, medicine to music, there are many characters of the African diaspora that have influenced our lives today. Some of them calling the very cities you live in their home. 
Those people are Roman emperors, Arctic explorers, celebrities as famous as Beyonce and writers that exist on your bookshelves and Kindles at home. So, I'd like you to discuss why you think these important characters have been forgotten or hidden in our history. Did you know about them? Great if you did! If you didn't, why do you think you know about some historical characters, but not others? Ooh, I am so interested in the conversations you're having. This is sensitive stuff, so let's just take a wee breath. And exhale. <sighs> cool. There's been a lot of debate from Bristol to Liverpool about statues and landmarks named after celebrated slave owners. In fact, the Colston statue in Bristol was pulled down and replaced with a black woman. And there is debate about the lane named after James Penny in Liverpool being replaced. What are your views on Chris? Uh, <laughs> John Archer and Belinda Bennett. Pardon? Did you know that in 1913, John Archer became the first black mayor in London? He was a civil rights campaigner and came from Liverpool. But there's a painting of him in the Liverpool Town Hall and has a community centre named after him in Toxteth. Also, Belinda Bennett is the first woman to command a Windstar cruise ship and the first black woman to captain in the commercial cruise industry. Imagine captaining a cruise ship. <laughs> I didn't actually know that. That's cool. Thank you for finding a character to celebrate. Um, how did you find a character? To... Well, I googled it. Oh. Oh, that's what you've been doing on your phone. I wanted to see what I could find out about our local history. I found loads. Uh, I feel bad for being late and letting you down. I am sorry. But there's no point in just being sorry, is there? So I thought I'd start pulling away and contribute to the vlog that we're doing today. A couple of minutes searching and I found loads. You know, I've seen clips of John Barnes playing football on YouTube before. My dad's a massive Liverpool fan. Always goes on about him, how he's one of Liverpool FC and England's greatest ever stars. He was voted PFA Players Player of the Year in 1988. But I didn't realise that he is still a respected voice on issues such as racism and discrimination. He regularly appears at rallies and is on TV fighting for equality and justice in football, but also in society. I never thought of a footballer as anything other than just a footballer, to be honest. And, and you found all of that just from Googling it? Yeah. I mean, there are books on this, though, too, but uh, I'm going to order them later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Send me a link. Nice. So, I was thinking... Yes? In order to complete the next section, maybe we mm -hmm. do a bit Something a bit more like expression-y, expressive? Oh, you mean... Yep. Yeah. Finally. I can now add this to my list of acting roles, which include Customer One in McDonald's advert. I'll have mm, that one, please. Uh, man in background for EastEnders. In Waffle the Wonder Dog. Uh, Oh, Waffle, what are you like? <laughs> and now... Oh, no. I meant, well, I didn't, I didn't mean that. You look lovely. Um, mm. Oh. H how about I just continue? Yeah, I think that's probably for the best. So, we all know about the word representation now, and that's one of the reasons why we celebrate these authors, people that you're learning about. They add to the common stories of lived experiences that make up Britain. And since it's the Liverpool Children's Festival of Reading, do you know which of these people are famous for writing? Ooh, I know, I know! Uh, Patrice Lawrence, Catherine Johnson, Carl Nova, and Akala. Correct. 
The other people you can see are Howard Gale, the first black footballer to play for Liverpool, Lillian Bader, one of the first black women to join the RAF, and Irene Affle, the first ever black female inspector in the history of Merseyside Police. But let's go back to these writers. In her recent workshops, Patrice Lawrence said that she started writing black characters because she never read about them in books when she was growing up. She wanted to feel connected and for all children to read her stories and feel a sense of belonging. Sharing stories through written work, novels, poetry, spoken word, music, films, podcasts or any other way you can think of means people feel connected and recognised. Yeah. We need to hear from everyone from all walks of life. More and more, we're acknowledging that representation is important. Oscar Wilde is now celebrated not just for his talent, but that he was proud of being gay. This helps the LGBTQ community. There are girls that might not realise they can be electricians or architects because they've not seen this in real life or in the stories around them. So seeing women in these jobs helps open up career possibilities. A rapper called Akala has helped lots of people connect with Shakespeare by recognising the similarities to Shakespearean rhythm and rap. Carl Nova talks about how he connected to poetry in a poem called Poem. Let's take a look. When I was a kid, poetry seemed boring. Complex words on a page that almost left me snoring. I felt no connection, the language seemed foreign. If it fought for my attention, it was pointless warring. I was introduced to texts held in high esteem. I did recognize the genius, but it meant nothing to me. But all that changed when I heard an MC speak a poetic language that really went deep. It's like I woke up from being fast asleep. Everything seemed to slow down. How do you connect with poetry? Finding different types of people expressing different lived experiences helps more young people find meaning in life. Here's a clip of a poem called YOLO by George the Poet. This is a poem about a craze. Now this craze is a phrase. Now this craze of a phrase is hopefully a phase. See, YOLO stands for you only live once. And to my generation, that means anything goes. But I'm here to say, say something I think everyone knows. You see, millions of people in the last six months just recently discovered you only live once. Like she took hers off, ripped yours off. Now dance on stage until your wig falls off. And ignore the consequences at all costs. Convince yourself this isn't your loss. Like the last time I said YOLO. <laughs> I staggered from the left to the right and I still can't remember the rest of the night. It's not even... Com- this is a more sombre poem about the Grenfell Tower. How do you think Roger Robinson helps others express their own thoughts and feelings about the negative events in our British history? You'll find yourself making up reasons to stay late at the office or catch a drink with friends. At night, A roaring heat will break you into sweat, and no matter how you try, you can't wake up and you can't breathe. You'll hear a call to prayer mixed in with Felakuti zombie and a five-year-old girl constantly screaming for help from the guttural part of her voice, and you'll sit in the darkness for a while, clasping your knees, looking out your extra-large window at the view you've paid so dearly for. Take a look at Diana Roger, a London-based spoken word artist talking about her experiences. But this one is kind of my anti-BMP statement poem um, that is kind of based on a question that I I, um, always get asked. (laughs) I always get asked, where are you from? My repeated reply is London. The town that sheltered a mother fleeing from war-torn land, baby in belly giving chance to be a man, a city of prosperity. She, she seeks jobs, allowing her to keep her dignity independently living in a state. Not of it. 
her benefit? One son, a bright boy of renewable energy. He knew all he'd ever be was a product of the city that had changed his destiny. They say, all right, but what country? I breathe deeply, swallowing sarcastic syllables and exhale, England. We would like you to express yourselves, express your views, your thoughts, your feelings on this. You can do this in the form of a song, a rap, a poem, a story, a picture, anything you like. It's not graded and it's just for you. Nice. Something creative that's just for you, inspired by all of the people you've seen. So, who's stuck in your mind? How did you feel about them? Why? Let's give you 15 minutes to do as much as you can and if you need more than that, you can finish up in your own time. Teachers, get your paws on. Now! Hello! Oh, I am sensing some exceptional creativity on show. Thanks. I'm not going to lie, when you said that this wasn't a film, I was a bit disappointed. But I get it. I mean, not totally. I don't understand everything, but I certainly get it more now than I did before. Just from taking part and being asked questions, asking questions and searching for answers myself. My understanding of history has so many holes in it. I didn't have a clue about my own community. Well, not really, but I get it. Me acknowledging that is the first step. We all have holes in our knowledge. We all have moments of ignorance. But taking that first step is important, so thank you. More! What? More! I've got a hunger for it now. Let's do another task and see what we can learn from this lot. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good idea. Um, do you want to think of something? Oh, it would be a privilege, good sir. <laughs> okay, so, teachers, your time to shine again. If you could hand out the All About Me worksheets and in pairs discuss as you work. After your time is up, if anyone feels brave enough to share their thoughts, that would be amazing. Now, you have 10 minutes. Starting now! Hey! For a very long time we have celebrated figures from history that represent the rich and the powerful, who have perhaps done good things for their communities, but who have also been part of terrible things that we just gloss over or ignore. And when we're taught about black history, the figures or stories are usually linked with these terrible things, but often miss the achievements made by people of colour. But also, why should black history be reserved for just one month a year? Black history is part of all of our history. We should be celebrating incredible human beings who have moved us forward and had a positive impact on our society. We shouldn't be shying away from the more difficult topics, but our focus should be on telling these stories as truthfully and respectfully as possible. Yeah, allowing their voices to be heard. Mm. It's not about rewriting history. It's about steering clear of a one-sided narrative. It's about evening up the playing field. Sharing history in a fair and accurate way. And that is why diversity in writing, especially for lived experiences, is so important. It allows us to see a bigger picture and a true representation of society. From Nelson Mandela to Rosa Parks, these are important figures who we can learn a lot from. Yes, but it's also important to look a little closer to home. And celebrate those who have helped to shape the community we live in today. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> got a bit preachy. <laughs> no, good. Uh, me too. Don't apologise. Yeah, but, but when I get something wrong, I should acknowledge it, apologise and look out to improve, to understand and own my mistakes. True, but you shouldn't be apologising for passionately talking about how we can be more inclusive as a society. These are the conversations that need to be had, so preach on, I say. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, I will. I will. If we all owned our mistakes, took some responsibility, spoke up and were a little braver, the world would be a much more inclusive place. Mm. Let's celebrate diversity. 
Not that we should shy away from struggles, injustice, or dark periods on our past. And present. Yes, but the more we celebrate, the more we help people own their heritage, love the skin they're in. Ultimately, black history is all of our history, as you said. So let's make sure these stories are told. Yeah. Now, look, we're coming to the end now. When we do finish, there's a few extension worksheets that you can have a go at. Mm. But I just realized something. We didn't get to do the film. Oh, okay. Well, um, as a treat, <laughs> uh, let's do a film style ending. <laughs> yeah, cool. Cool. Uh, roll credits. What? Wait, no, 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 I didn't mean that. I meant, I meant the acting. Oh.